3631 Tactical coming at you with another Palmetto State Armory rifle review. All right, the rifle that we're going to review this time is the PX-10. Uh, we recently got this from Palmetto State Armory. It was $5.99, free shipping. It is a 308 AR-10 uh, rifle, but it's the lightweight version. It's the lightweight version of the PA-10. So without further ado, let's open the box and show you what we got. Now this comes with the... Uh, Comes with a 20 round P mag, the rifle itself is right here. It's just like the uh, the PA-10 that I did a video on, pretty much same exact thing except this is a lighter weight version of that rifle. The chamber for 308, all the same components as far as the barrel and, and the stock and the trigger and all that, it's also all the same, it's just a, a lighter weight version. Alright, quick disclaimer about this video. I shot it over the course of several months, so it's a bunch of different video clips kind of blended together. Hopefully it makes sense to you. Uh, the video is about the PX-10, which is Palmetto State Armory's lightweight AR-10 chambered for 308. Um, I'm comparing that to the PA-10, which is the regular version. So we're going to answer questions such as, you know, how lightweight is this thing? How much, how much less does it weigh than the, the original version? How accurate it is? I do a little test where I shoot five different types of hunting ammunition um, just to see how well it shoots all these various grains of bullets and the expensive bullets and the cheap bullets and and uh, and that's about it. Uh, my primary purpose is I just like hunting with ARs and that's what the gun is for. So that's what the review is for. So you guys can see if you're interested in the same thing or if you just want an inexpensive AR to go out and shoot um, if this uh, gun will meet your needs. So All right, so this is the Palmetto State Armory PX-10 and the PX-10 is supposed to be a lightweight version of the PA-10. Uh, we got this rifle about six months after we got the PA-10. I'll put a link in the description box if you want to see the uh, the review on the PA-10. That thing shot phenomenally. We've set up the PX-10 the exact same way, the exact same sling, exact same optic, shooting the exact same rounds, exact same magazine to see how much of a difference there was, uh, if there's any difference at all. The big thing that made me want to buy this was that it was uh, advertised as lightweight, but on the website or anywhere on the uh, internet, I couldn't find anything that showed how much this gun weighed. So I'm probably sure that's what's most on most people's mind is how much is this gonna weigh how much more lightweight is it than the original model so let's go to a clip real quick where I'm gonna weigh both of these guns side by side alright so we got the PX10 and the PA10 the PX10 is the one with the tan uh, sling the PA10 is the one with the gray sling other than that there's no difference to these two guns other than what is different from the manufacturer but I haven't changed anything other than putting a sling on them so we're gonna weigh these these guns and we're gonna see uh, if there's a weight difference and if so how much of a weight difference is there between the PX-10 and the PA-10. All right, it's gonna be a little tricky because I'm doing this by myself, but you can see the sling, got the tan sling. This is the uh, PX-10. Go ahead and put it on the scale here. See what we got as far as weight. Looks like 818. 818 is what we got for weight for the PX-10, which is supposed to be the lightweight version. Let's go ahead and grab the PA-10 and see how much that weighs. All right, again, I apologize when I'm doing this by myself, doing the best I can. See, I got the gray sling. This is the one that's on the PA-10. We're going to, go to put this one on the scale and see what we get. See what it comes up with here. What is that? 8.38 it looks like? 8.38. So the lightweight version is 8.18 and the regular version is 8.38. Hmm. All right, so one of the difference that Palmetto State Armory advertises as uh, the PX-10 being a lightweight version is the the uh, foreign right here for free flow tube is supposed to be lighter um, and it, I think it probably is because it's shorter I measured these two got this ruler here measured both of them and this one is 13 and a quarter inches long for the PX 10 and for the PA 10 it's 14 and a half inches so they shaved a little bit you can kind of see this foreign here is covering more of the barrel and these barrels are the same length but more barrels exposed here so this is and I measured it so it's definitely a little bit shorter so I'm sure of course that's going to shave off some uh, some weight the other difference that I remember reading when I bought this was that there was a difference in the bolt. So let me break these guns down. I'll show you the bolt carrier group and see if there's any difference in those parts. All right, so we can already see a difference here. The bolt carrier group from the PX-10, which is this one right here, clearly see is a little bit shorter than the one from the PA-10. The PX-10 is about eight and a quarter. Looks like it's about eight and a quarter, and the PA-10 is about eight and a half inches long total, the total size of the bolt carrier group with the bolt. So they've, they've shaved a little bit of uh, material, a little bit of size off of this part as well to reduce the weight. All right, so here we've completely broken down the bolt carrier group. This one right here, this bolt is from the PA-10 and this bolt is from the PX-10. It's kind of interesting that the uh, 
the design here. It almost looks like the PX10 one would weigh more because it looks like it's got a little more material. And I was very careful when I took these things apart. I, I didn't get them mixed up. This is actually the one that I had in my PA10. And this is the PX10. So even though the bolt carrier group, this thing, the bolt carrier group here on the uh, PX10 is smaller. It looks like the actual bolt itself is a little bit bigger with a little bit more material. All right, here's a look at the bolts. You can see there's obviously a different one bolt. Looks like it has a little more material, slightly different design. So there's probably a little bit of weight savings there as well. All right, so as you can see, um, the difference in weight between this gun and the PA-10 was, was negligible. It's, it's minuscule. So I, I don't know why they're advertising it as a lightweight version. It's, it's a tiny, tiny bit lighter. And that's about it. I really like Paul Metal State stuff. It's really inexpensive and, and it shoots great. But um, I don't know why they're advertising this gun as lightweight because it's the, the weight difference, as you, as you saw from when I weighed them, is, is absolutely minute. <clears throat> All right, so we're at 100 yards. I got uh, five rounds of 168 grain bolt tail hollow points from Federal. We're going to shoot this gun and see how good of a group this gun shoots as compared to our PA-10. Here we go, going hot. All right, so here's the target. I came out here today, I didn't have any stickers. So I just was shooting what somebody had already left at the range. So those uh, shots down there aren't mine, but this is what I shot at. It's about a two inch sticker, five shots at hundred yards. And here's my cap to the uh, turrets on my scope. And you can just about cover the shots with that cap. So it's probably just a little bit over an inch. The gun probably shoots much better than I do. So I think Palmetto gets a kind of a thumbs down for advertising this as lightweight when it's really not lightweight. But I think they get a thumbs up for another quality rifle. When, when you get these kind of inexpensive budget rifles, it's hit or miss. Some of them shoot great, some of them don't. Uh, my PA-10 shot lights out, sub them MOA all day. And this gun is pretty close. I think I need to maybe get a few more rounds on the barrel and um, maybe it'll shoot a little bit better. But even right now, it's a, an inch, maybe just a smidge over an inch. And that's pretty good for a, uh, an AR-10 that's cost you know five seventy nine. That's a really good, uh, really good accuracy level for such an inexpensive rifle. All right, so now the next clip, I'm gonna shoot five different types of hunting ammunition from this gun. I'm gonna shoot it kind of fast. I'm not really gonna take my time. I'm not gonna let the barrel cool down or anything. I'm gonna see how good it groups five different types of ammunition with five different weight uh, weight brains. All right, so we're back out here on the range with the PX10 from Palmetto State Armory, chambered in 308. We're gonna do something a little bit different today. I know this isn't any kind of scientific test or anything but for me personally this is just a cool deer hunting rifle so we're going to shoot these four different types of common uh, hunting rounds we got the precision hunter 178 grain eldx bullet from hornady the non-typical bullet from hornady which is 150 grain soft point then we also have the american whitetail 150 grain interlock bullet again from hornady and then we have the federal uh federal power shock 180 grain soft point bullet I'm sorry, I think I just said Hornady. This is actually from Federal, the not typical. These two are the inexpensive, you know, $15 to $20 a box. Same thing with this Federal stuff. Precision Hunter is a little more expensive, I think $30 to $35. And I also have some um, Federal uh, Gold Metal Match 168 grain bolt to hollow points that I've already loaded up in the mag. So we got a total of 25 shots we're going to shoot because we're going to shoot five shots of each different types of ammunition. We're all going to shoot it at one target. I got one two inch sticker down there at 100 yards. And we're just going to shoot all 25 rounds and see what type of group we can put together with all these different bullet weights and bullet um, uh, different styles of bullets. I know this is nothing scientific, but just for the hell of it, let's see how many different types of deer hunting ammunition this gun can eat and shoot accurately.
So I don't think this uh, this test really proves anything one way or the other. I got everything from 150 grain all the way up to 180 grain bullets. Some are match grade bullets, some are high, expensive hunting bullets, some are cheap hunting bullets. Again, not saying this really proves anything, but I shot these uh, all five groups or all five shots pretty quick. I didn't, you know, I wasn't like waiting around for the barrel to cool down or any of that stuff. Load them up, shot them, load them up, shot them until he shot out 25 rounds. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. At 100 yards, shooting at a two inch sticker. That's a two inch sticker. Now I know that's not any great, amazing accuracy feat. Right, a lot of people go, oh, what the hell, what's that? But um, I think the, the point of it is that's five different types or four different types of hunting ammunition, one type of match grade target ammunition. And every one of those, you know, I mean, you can cover your fist with a group, which is not impressive from an accuracy standard, but from a hunting standard, I can take this rifle, go to Walmart or wherever, buy whatever kind of ammunition they have, throw it in the gun, and as long as the gun's sighted in, I mean, I'm gonna be good enough to kill a deer um, with that, that level of accuracy with this rifle. So it's not, too picky about what type of ammo, at least from a hunting accuracy perspective. So I'm at home editing this video and I realized I didn't do any kind of closing statement on it. So I'll do that now. If you're looking for a lightweight 308, the PX10 is not really any more lightweight than the PA10. But for a budget AR-10, it's what I say, I think it was $5.99 I paid for it. It shot really good. Sometimes with these budget rifles, you get one that shoots lights out and the very next one is crap. But both of them, PA-10 and PX-10, both of the rifles I got shot really, really well. You saw from the video, shoot about an inch, maybe just a smidge over an inch. And some of that's probably me. I haven't been shooting rifle much lately. <clears throat> but it still shot really good. Um, I use them to hunt. I just like hunting with ARs. It's just kind of my thing. I know that test that... The test with the five different types of ammunition is not really any kind of scientific high speed test. I don't know that it means anything other than you can go to Walmart and buy whatever 308 caliber uh, deer hunting rounds they have on the shelf and it's, it's going to work. It's going to be pretty good. It wasn't very picky about uh, when I was shooting through it. It was reliable. I, I didn't have any problems really with malfunctions at all. The thing was reliable. It was accurate and it was inexpensive and it's an AR-10, which is cool. So, so it's not really, I wouldn't really consider it lightweight compared to the regular PA-10, but it's still a quality rifle. It's still crazy accurate, and it's still crazy inexpensive. So if you're looking at one, especially if you're like me, you just want to take something out to hunt with, or just want to, an AR-10, you just want to shoot a little bit, do some target shooting like it, don't hesitate to pick it up. And remember to like and subscribe, and I promise I'm going to start kicking out a lot more videos here in the upcoming weeks and months. Thanks for watching.